name is Dal Sherpa. I'm on top of Mount Everest. As you can see all around us, there's ice and snow and glaciers. But it's predicted that by 40 years, all this will have melted away. Not only will this be a loss for us mountaineers, this is a treasure for us, but it is also a vital necessity for people who depend upon these glaciers for water. The landscape of the Himalayan Kingdom of Nepal is one of the most spectacular on Earth. The warm welcome of the Nepali people can disguise the many challenges that living here can bring. Nepal is the 14th poorest country in the world and the poorest in Asia. This film investigates the impact of climate change in Nepal and the South Asia region. We will also draw some comparisons with the United Kingdom. In Nepal, the glaciers are the water towers for more than 500 million people living in South Asia. But Nepal is highly vulnerable to the negative impacts of climate change. We suffer from hotter, drier summers, shorter and more erratic and intense monsoon, and warmer, dry winters. This will mean increased intensity of floods, changes in the monsoon, stronger storms, and a growing threat from glacial lake outburst floods. All these effects will have a major impact on the people of Nepal, particularly the poor, who will be most affected. However, climate change issues are also closely related to development in countries like Nepal, and this also presents new opportunities for us. 25% of Nepalis are food insecure in a land where 75% of the population depends on subsistence agriculture. The climate is already changing. In West Nepal, there is less rainfall, which means farmers can only grow one crop of rice. The long-term result is likely to be widespread loss of income and potential famine. Rice prices have risen steeply across Nepal in 2008-2009. Traditional patterns of agriculture in both the mountains and in the hills, areas previously largely self-sufficient in food, may be disrupted. This is leading to urban and peri-urban population migration and the breakup of communities. In the mid-hills, where millions of Nepalis live, the life is becoming very, very stressful. People don't have water to drink, people don't have water for sanitation, people don't have water to maintain their livelihoods. And then of course you have increased instances of landslides because as you get more intense rainfall, the slopes of the mountain are going to fail because lots of water is going to come down in a very short time, what we call cloud burst. Floods are going to be more frequent. Now if you expand that scale and this changing ideological character of the regional hydrological system is going to ultimately impact on the regional system of the Ganga River. The Koshi flood of August 2008 created 50,000 refugees in Nepal and 1 million in India, and in the longer term produced widespread food shortages and crop failure. What will the demographic and food security implications be if this kind of event is repeated on a larger scale because of a climate change related event? <laughs> Extreme weather events are now happening in the UK. The 2007 flood in Gloucester was a dramatic wake-up call and it cost the UK 30 million pounds. Although not on the same scale as Koshi, the UK flood created hundreds of flood refugees. Martin Bragg, an organic farmer from Devon, explains changing weather is affecting his farming. You know, the unpredictability makes things hard to manage and if we have a crop failure, it's more dramatic. We lost most of our squash plants last year because it was so wet. Climate change is a wicked problem. It's a nasty problem. You know, it results from so many different factors. And it does not have one silver bullet solution. The historical knowledge that we have is not going to tell us how the future is going to be. It requires uncomfortable knowledge. And we need what we call clumsy solutions. We need everybody doing lots of things. We need the government to be doing some certain things. We need the market to be doing certain things. And we also need the civic movement to be asking questions and critiquing and challenging and contesting. So this plurality would lead us to you know, finding out the solutions to this wicked problem. In Nepal and the UK, we are all involved in reframing the climate change debate. 
As we begin to appreciate Ajahn Dikchit's words, one thing becomes certain that only by acknowledging the very serious nature of climate change can we hope to make progress towards achieving low carbon futures. Nepal desperately needs a good climate change deal in Copenhagen, one which is equitable and ambitious. Water is something very precious for this country. It's like oil for us. When the glacier is finished, then the earth is, uh, the water is dry. Then there will be a big problem 